Hello, everybody. This is the 9th of April, 2011. This is the second Silverlog video for today. And on this one, I want to talk about cotton mainly, as it seems that oil has been grabbing all of the mainstream attention for the story of the week or the story of the month. Not so much for silver, although silver is gaining awareness. And when you move up in uh, price, 32% for the year and well over 100% since the uh, summer of last year. It's bound to get more attention, but it has seemed that silver has taken a back seat to oil and cotton is taking a back seat to silver. When we look at the gains, we can see cotton in first, the only thing of, of the list of different items that's doing better than silver. There are many more and a few of them probably are doing better than silver and that's what I was thinking when I originally was getting into silver a few years ago, that most likely silver was going to dominate most investments, most investments that are out there. And it pretty much has. Now, there's going to be a few that will outperform it. And I was expecting at first it would be food followed by energy. I don't think I'll be right on that one. But overall, as far as silver gaining on many assets, which is the main one, then yeah, because the reason why I get into silver, it means... The majority of products out there will get cheaper in prices as the months and years move on. Now, as far as investing in these assets on a tangible level, silver, gold, platinum, copper, palladium, and any precious metal for that matter, it's fairly easy to uh, collect or to invest in on a tangible mark. You buy the metals, whether they be bullion, Bars, bullion rounds, whether they be scrap uh, jewelry, scrap uh, circulated coins, you name it, and you put it in a safe somewhere, or you bury it somewhere in a safe location. Fairly simple. As far as cotton is concerned, I, I don't know what to say. Maybe you go out and buy cotton balls by the cases and fill up your garage full of cotton balls. Not saying I recommend that, but the price of cotton has been going up significantly. And maybe it means growing cotton, and I'd have no idea how the procedures for that work or the locations cotton can even grow in. I wouldn't have a clue. But it's something that people could do. Now, as far as oil is concerned, whether it be heating oil, oil, natural gas, which is getting crushed anyway, do you really want to tangibly invest large portions into this myself i would rather pass and within any of the stock markets they're all priced in dollars and they're all working within the banking system you have to buy and sell within the bank of some financial institution and you have to buy with cash you have to sell with cash when you buy silver you can sell it for cash and you can sell it for other things whether it be gold whether it be assets you want to buy within some sort of barter which is why I'm really big on the tangible part of gold and silver. So now we'll do, what we'll do is we'll take a look at cotton. And this is the BALETF. The spreadsheets haven't been updated too, too much. Just going to go over a quick view of this. And when I look at this daily chart, what I notice is that there are way too many red candles for a bull market. The prices went from, on the ETF point of view, has went from the 50 range over 100 or a gain of over 100%. And we see the last three candles. On an uptrend, we've had three down moves in a row, yet it's up since this period ended. And what this is telling me is that the market does better when it's not on the New York time frame. And a few weeks, a few weeks ago, I did a video called Silver in Two Different Markets. Because what I found out was that the markets on silver go up much higher through the non-New York time frame from 4 o'clock Eastern to 9.30 a.m. than they do during the New York time. Now, since I've done that, if you're looking for an update, it's done better in the U.S. But as far as this one is concerned, same sort of deal. This is what the comparison looks like. It's uh, blue is the non-U.S. time, orange is U.S., and it's been skyrocketing on the New York, New York on the New York time frame. This is over 500 days, pretty much two years. And the rally, which began a little while ago, has seen them seen this one do better than double, and this one barely go up at all. So they've taken this market down mostly 
on the U.S. time frame. Now, as far as the ratio is concerned, actually, I want to get to that in a second because the first ratio I want to show you is this one. This is the uh, ratio over the last two years. This is the cotton to silver ratio. I take the ETF for the cotton. I divide it by the ETF for silver, closing prices. And what this is showing us is that during the rally of last year, that cotton was outperforming silver. Even though silver was doing magnificent, it was losing ground. And it stayed mostly around this two and a quarter range on the ETF anyway. And it uh, had a big move higher and it's quickly went lower. This reminds me of the way the gold to silver ratio looked a little ways, ways back when it was trading in a little range and it had a big pop up to the uh, 80, 90 level and then it later crashed lower. And as far as the cotton to silver ratio over the last 125 years, this is what the data shows us. That it went all the way up to a 50 to 1 mark. When this goes higher, that means the price of cotton is more valuable than silver. As this goes lower, this means the value of silver is gaining on copper. And I was very surprised to see that the ratio was as high as it was during this period. Now, if you're wondering what year this is, we will look for the first peak above 40, the second peak to 50. This is the ratio in here. So the first peak to 40 took us to 1922, 23, the start of the roaring 20s. Then the second peak that took us to 50 took us to 1950. And that was more on silver just really being devalued. Silver at 78 cents during this time frame. You can see as silver was starting to go up, silver went from 78 cents to $2, where cotton went from 40 to 26. So that really crushed the ratio hard. And during the big run for silver, during the inflationary period, cotton started around 22 and ended at 74, so it tripled. But here we have silver going from a buck 60 to an average of 22, and it actually went up to 50. That was the average for a 79 year was $21.79. So that's mainly the uh, chart for it. And this doesn't leave me too optimistic right now for seeing silver, or excuse me, this doesn't see me see optimistic for cotton over that of silver. There can be a lot of downside room when you have this move from 50 down to here, and now what's looking like a, correction, a correctionary phase. I'd still expect, but just by looking at chart management, that I would have at least one more wash down lower or one more wave lower before this would eventually bottom. Maybe this is the bottom. This is a yearly chart. I don't know. But at the same point, if you're looking at the charts, that this it's not bullish to choose cotton over silver right now. But as far as the stats are concerned, it kind of is. So I'll let you decide how you want to play it.